when we talk about challenges of especially mid-sized or smaller companies when they go uh, global or into emerging markets as compared to multinational companies, our experience shows that um, both company sizes, so to say, have the same basic challenges. The biggest challenges when we talk about you know, small and medium enterprises from Switzerland or Germany, uh, if they go to emerging markets, they have three basic challenges. The first challenge is to understand actually the local rules of the game. So we call it industry intelligence. And that doesn't help if you have a lot of you know, reports telling you about the biggest developments. You really need to understand how it's done locally. So that's number one. The second one is, even if you understand how it works, to get the access to the right people. Uh, this is what we call the, the networking uh, challenge, so to say. And the last one is, is definitely the intercultural challenge. So how do you deal with business people in China, in, in Brazil or elsewhere? Uh, what are, you know, how do you define also the processes of your company in that country? So the, the, there are a lot of, of issues, but basically those three are the major ones. Here in the area, in St. Gallen, we have a lot of companies with high quality products. And uh, we have seen, especially in the luxury market, that these companies really being active there are very successful within the Middle East, in China, elsewhere uh, around the world in emerging markets. To explain to an Indian business uh, partner, to a customer, why he should you know, pay more for a high quality product, for a highly innovative product, is sometimes a challenge on the mindset side, but also often on the financial side. What we see is often nowadays that companies need to rethink their business models, how they enter or how they expand in emerging markets. You don't need to be a, a multinational corporation to be successful in an emerging market. We have a lot of examples of, of small companies, mid-sized companies who do very well in emerging markets, but the, the key success factor, so to say, is always to focus. Focus on a specific country, focus on a specific solution that you offer, in that where, where you really know what you're doing and where you understand the rules of the game. Intercultural challenges are obviously uh, a key challenge for, for most companies when they go abroad you know, in the direction of China, India or, or Latin America because we have a lot of differences uh, that influence how business is done. We differentiate uh, three levels of, of intercultural challenges or how you look at intercultural uh, communication, etc. So one is the intercultural communication as such. What do I communicate? How do I communicate? Uh, what do I say? What I'm not supposed to talk about, etc. The second challenge and the second level that we differentiate is intercultural management. It means, for example, if your joint venture partner, your potential joint venture partner, needs some additional funding or you have to jointly fund a study to better understand the market. Now, are you actually supposed to really co-fund such a study or is it not the role of your potential joint venture partner to do that because he is proposing one to you in his market? We do a lot of uh, critical incident technique studies where we help, where we discuss these kind of challenges with the Indian or Chinese uh, managers as well left with the Swiss and German managers and then compare the answers and see how far apart are the perceptions on how to solve a specific problem. So that's basically what most companies nowadays really care about. And the last one, uh, which is still not so obvious to many companies but which costs a lot of money, is this intercultural process design. Which means if you do business with a joint venture partner or with your own operations team, how much of the Swiss standard procedures that you have for all of kind of be it administration, be it how you develop product, how do you give feedback on, on somebody's ideas, how much of these kind of, let's say, standards do you really want the local guys to adapt to, or how much flexibility do you give them? An example of this uh, intercultural process design challenge is definitely when you look at the automotive or the aerospace industry, uh, where many of the multinational corporations from Germany want to establish two research centers in India. Um, now, 
if you have German engineers and Indian engineers working together, you can imagine what kind of chaos of perceptions of what is the proper kind of way of giving feedback or what is actually already innovation is, is one of the challenges. And if you don't design the process of how people will actually exchange information and ideas and make people aware of the differences and even define some way of, of an interface, then uh, you will always finally see that it doesn't work, but you will never understand where exactly in the process things have gone wrong. We work a lot with uh, companies from, from India and China especially, and what they find attractive about the region and the university are actually two things. Uh, number one is the labor force. So we have a high quality labor force here in the region. Uh, they also are able to use the University of St. Gallen as a sparing partner, as a coach, so to say, that helps them to make the first steps into the markets. When I go to companies always, I make clear that they are aware, they have enough time for such a project, they have some financial resources, and they have a certain passion for the country. If you don't have that, bad. Huh? And then the rest is, well, doing the right things, working with the right partners, but if you have the right starting point, you're almost there. You're not there, but you're almost there.